Pride and Prejudice is an 1813 novel by the British author Jane Austen. Austen was born in 1775, the daughter of a rector of the seventh of eight children. Her parents valued her independence of mind, with the result that she grew up to become shrewd and witty. In 1802, she probably agreed to marry, but changed her mind the following day. She remained single until her death, probably from Addison's disease, in 1817, at the age of just 41. Of the six novels for which she's chiefly remembered, only four appeared during her lifetime. The others were published shortly after her death. Pride and Prejudice was her second. Like all her books, it was published anonymously. She accepted a single payment from the publisher, in return for which he would take the profits, but also absorb any losses. In the event, he made a substantial profit. Both of the first two editions of the book quickly sold out. It's about the Bennets, a family of two parents and five daughters who live in a large house in Hertfordshire. Unfortunately, a clause in the deeds means that on the death of the father, the property will be inherited by the next male in line, so the daughters could end up losing everything. In order to prevent that, it's necessary that at least one of them should marry a rich man. The novel focuses on the second oldest daughter, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is her father's favourite and is intelligent and principled. She refuses a marriage proposal from a clergyman, much to her mother's annoyance, but she remains involved in the conventional social circuit of outings and balls, which is where she meets a seemingly horrendous snob called Fitzwilliam Darcy. Mr Darcy is wealthy, but Elizabeth understandably takes a strong dislike to him after he declares her not handsome enough to dance with. However, he has hidden depths. The novel is written from Elizabeth's point of view, but Mr. Darcy's reserve is gradually broken down as he comes to realise that handsomeness is a superficial quality in a woman and that intelligence isn't. She comes to realise that he too has rare hidden qualities. Her prejudice and his pride dissipate together. What makes Pride and Prejudice such a great novel is partly its form. Each of its aspects works together to make the whole even better than its component parts. It's a very good story, the characters are well developed and recognisable even today from most people's life experience. The writing's precise, the theme's perennial, and the protagonist behaves perceptively. And there are no implausible shocks. The idea that the perfection of a novel might reside in its form isn't a popular one. Some people expect a novel to be philosophy by other means, or to showcase purple prose, or to be a bold artistic experiment in which the author frustrates conventional expectations and carves out new creative roads. Jane Austen doesn't indulge those expectations. She doesn't sermonise or produce long intellectual digressions or overdo descriptions. She brooks no gratuitous intrusions, in other words. She just tells a good story well. There's a rare, bracing purity about all our novels. I'm probably speaking to people who've already read Pride and Prejudice and who'll be well aware of its virtues. If you're not one of them, well, you've got it to look forward to. And that's not a bad position to be in.